Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases where the most important risk factor is the increase in the pressure inside the eye. Now, this increased pressure leads to damage of the optic nerve. This eventually leads to defects or blurring of the peripheral field of your vision. And if it's not detected or not controlled, it can lead to permanent blindness. Glaucoma is often referred to the sneak thief of vision because most of the glaucoma patients will not notice any symptoms. This is because the first part of the visual field that's affected is not the center, it's the peripheral part of your vision. So patients only notice that the vision begins to blur or the visual field begins to get more constricted in the later stages of the disease. So in glaucoma, what is affected is the optic nerve. Okay, This is the optic nerve. It's the main cable that connects the eyeball with the brain. So once the optic nerve is damaged from the high pressure in glaucoma, it's a permanent loss of nerve tissue. So you cannot recover that again. Now, for the other disease, which is the cataract, the cataract affects the lens of the eye. This is the lens, and normally, it's clear. So it's like a window where you peep out. Now, as we get older, or because of other underlying problems, this naturally clear lens can become cloudy, like this lens here. Now, this cloudy lens blocks the vision. But in cataract, the good thing about it is it's a temporary visual loss. So this can be removed, the cataract can be removed and replaced with an artificial clear intraocular lens again. So the vision can be recovered after cataract removal. When we talk about the different types of glaucoma, you can actually classify glaucoma several ways. So let's talk about one example. We can classify glaucoma based on the onset. Most of the glaucomas, as you know, come after the age of 45. So it's about uh, usually an adult onset type of glaucoma. But sometimes, in rare cases, a child can be born with glaucoma. So that's what you call congenital glaucoma. When it comes after birth or before the age of 18, then it's called juvenile or developmental glaucoma. Glaucoma can also be classified another way. There are primary types and secondary types. Now, like the name implies, the secondary type of glaucoma is from an underlying cause. It can be because of a coexistent eye problem, like diabetic eye diseases, or associated with inflammation of the eye. It can also be secondary to trauma, or let's say you take steroids and steroid-induced glaucoma develops, this is also a secondary type of glaucoma. Now, in contrast, the primary type of glaucoma, this is usually the familial type where we don't find any underlying cause. The most common way of classifying glaucoma is by the angle status or the drainage canal status. This can be either the open angle type of glaucoma where the drainage canal of the eye is open, but it's not functioning well or effectively anymore. The other type is the angle closure glaucoma, where the angles or the drainage canals are blocked or there's a structural barrier so the water cannot drain out effectively. Since most patients have no symptoms until the later stage of the disease, it is not recommended that we rely on the symptoms that can develop because of glaucoma because most symptoms will come at a later stage of the disease. This is when we bump into garbage cans because we've lost already the inferior field of vision or when we drive, we don't see that the car is coming to overtake us from the side because we've lost the peripheral vision. Now, there is a certain type of glaucoma as we mentioned a while ago, the angle closure type. Since there's a sudden closure of the drainage canal, this glaucoma can have symptoms. The acute type of the angle closure glaucoma can have a sudden blurring of vision, 
headache, blurred vision, a red eye, and there can also be nausea and vomiting because of the sudden increase in pressure with this type of glaucoma. So for the risk factors that put you at a higher chance of developing glaucoma is if you have an increase in intraocular pressure. This is the most important risk factor and also the only modifiable risk factor at the moment. But other important risk factors are advancing age, a family history. So if you have a relative with glaucoma, your risk increases. There are also certain conditions in the eye that can put you at a higher risk for developing glaucoma. If you are farsighted or nearsighted, you're at a higher risk. If you have coexistent eye diseases like diabetic eye diseases, or if you are hypertensive, a previous complicated eye surgery, certain inflammatory conditions of the eye, trauma to the eye, the use of steroids can all add to the risk of developing glaucoma. If you look at the global prevalence of glaucoma, it's set at about 3.52%. And in terms of the distribution of the types of glaucoma, for the open angle type, Africans would have the highest risk for developing this type of glaucoma worldwide. And for the angle closure type of glaucoma, the Asians are at the highest risk for developing this type of glaucoma. In the past, there are some myths about glaucoma. And um, just to clarify, many patients believe that when they have hypertension, they automatically may have glaucoma. Although high blood pressure or hypertension puts you at risk also for glaucoma, it's not an automatic sequelae when you have high blood pressure because we do get patients without high blood pressure, but they do have high pressure or glaucoma and vice versa. And many patients also have asked me if they have a vision of 2020 or their vision is good, then they are sure that they don't have glaucoma. But this is not true because as we mentioned, glaucoma affects peripheral vision first. So you can lose your entire mid and peripheral vision before the central vision is affected. So until the later stages of the disease, we have a lot of patients with 20-20 vision, but they're already in the moderate to advanced stage of glaucoma. Patients at risk for glaucoma may be picked up during a comprehensive eye examination. So what are these particular findings that put a patient at risk when we examine them? One is the pressure of the eye or the intraocular pressure. If your pressure is higher than normal range, which is set at 21 and below, then your risk for glaucoma is higher. So the next structure to be checked is the optic nerve because normally it's reddish pink in color. If it's more pale than the normal appearance, the chance for glaucoma becomes higher. So the next important finding is the angle status or the drainage canal of the patient. And through an examination called gonioscopy that we do in the clinics, we are able to determine whether the drainage canal of a patient is open, narrow, or close. If any one of those findings come out positive, then the patient will need glaucoma screening tests. So what are the glaucoma screening tests we do? Number one is a visual field exam or what we call automated perimetry. Through an automated machine, the visual field of a, of a patient can be determined whether there are field defects already starting. Number two is an OCT nerve scan. It's like a CT scan of the optic nerve. In glaucoma, the optic nerve tissue, which is this, begins to thin out with time. So the scan can determine whether a significant amount of nerve tissue has already been affected. Now, the third screening test, especially in patients that have narrow canals or angles, we do an anterior segment scan. It is able to determine whether the drainage canal of the patient needs to be addressed and treated. 
Once you are diagnosed with glaucoma, each patient should remember that it's a disease that is never cured. It can only be controlled. Because if you don't control this disease, it will lead to eventual blindness, which is permanent. For the management of glaucoma, for the open angle type of glaucoma first, it's a stepwise approach. We usually start with eye drops or medications that are placed inside the eye. And the good thing about the present time is there are different classes of medications that are available that we can try either alone or in combination with other medications. Now, if medications fail to control the pressure in glaucoma, the next step will be laser treatment. Now, laser treatment school would be to try to open up the canals and drain more water out of the eye so the pressure goes down. Now, if laser and medications are not able to control the pressure in glaucoma, then the next step will be glaucoma surgery. Now, in the angle closure type, I just want to emphasize that because in angle closure, the canal is structurally blocked, laser or glaucoma surgery will have to be done sooner to attempt to open up the canals. Many patients have asked me, can glaucoma surgery really be done? Can it really cure glaucoma? As we mentioned, even glaucoma surgery doesn't cure glaucoma. If medications or laser fail to control glaucoma, we still do glaucoma surgery in order to try to preserve the vision and bring down the pressure. In glaucoma surgery, we make a more definite connection between the inside of the eye to the exterior part of the eye to drain the water out. Now, the gold standard in glaucoma surgery is what we call trabeculectomy. Here we make a direct connection between the inside of the eye to the exterior part of the eye in order to drain the water. So it's just like a pathway that you make. Now, sometimes some patient's scarring ability is very high. So it's able to scar down this canal. In patients that don't respond very well to trabeculectomy, tube surgery, where we put an implant to the canal we make, can be used to further decrease the chance of failure during surgery. Many questions that we get nowadays are other alternative treatments for glaucoma. Because as we mentioned, whatever is lost is permanent and we can't bring it back. So questions about using stem cell treatment for glaucoma is often asked by many patients and I'd just like to emphasize that stem cell treatment is an experimental procedure, especially for glaucoma. It's still under investigation and although theoretically when you think about it, stem cell is new tissue and if ever it works, you're going to be able to produce a new optic nerve. But at this level, we do not recommend it because it's still under investigation. Marijuana has also been shown to bring down the pressure in glaucoma. So many patients have also asked us if they can use it to help control glaucoma. And although it has been shown to bring down the pressure, either inhaled or taken orally, studies have shown that you will have to take marijuana very often in order to control the pressure in a 24-hour period. And since there are safer options available, like the medications we have now, taking marijuana to control glaucoma is not recommended by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. If you have a family history for glaucoma, I would recommend that you have yourself checked in order to know whether you are at risk for glaucoma as well. If you're 40 years and up, it's better to have it as soon as you can so we know whether you have the risk factors for glaucoma and you can be monitored accordingly. When we use medications for any eye diseases, like for sore eyes, sometimes for allergies when the eyes are itchy, we tend to self-medicate. And sometimes the medications we use may have steroids. Steroids not only can cause a cataract early on in life, but they can also be a risk factor for the development of glaucoma.